Now, let me explain, where are we? We're in uh, Florida, in Orlando. You'll have quite a few bombs targeted on you. Let me explain what would happen. You know, sometimes you're listening to NPR and you hear, ooh, we are just testing the emergency broadcasting system. This time you'd hear, ooh, you are under nuclear attack, run to the nearest fallout shelter. You have only about five minutes to get there by the time the attack's notified, etc. Um, the missile will come in, or the bombs, at 20 times the speed of sound. You won't even hear them. They'll explode here with six times the heat inside the centre of the sun. And this is ground zero. It will dig a hole three quarters of a mile wide and 800 feet deep, turning us, the buildings, and the earth below to radioactive fallout shut up in the mushroom cloud. Five miles in all directions, everyone's vaporized. A little boy in Hiroshima was reaching up to catch a red dragonfly against the blue of the sky on his hand, and there was a blinding flash, and he disappeared. And if you go to the Hiroshima Museum, there's his shadow on the pavement. 20 miles from here in all directions, everyone will be lethally burnt lying in what remains of the buildings and what remains of the streets. The White House has been stockpiling huge quantities of morphia just in case there's a nuclear war. But we don't know where it is. We'll be dead and injured too. There'll be no syringes, no doctors. People will be sucked out of buildings by winds of 500 miles an hour, turning into missiles traveling at 100 miles an hour. Windows popcorn, shards of glass decapitating people. And then the whole area will be engulfed in a huge firestorm of 3,000 square miles. Even in winter in Boston, everything will burn. And as these fires burn, huge amounts of black radioactive smoke are shot up into the stratosphere all over the country. And the fires will coalesce right across America, east to west, north to south, and the whole country will burn. And as these cities burn all over the world, the black smoke will rise into the stratosphere. Incidentally, the ozone will be destroyed. So if you do survive in a shelter and you go out, you'll be instantly blinded by the ultraviolet light. It gets sunburn, third degree sunburn in three minutes. This cloud covers the earth with a, so thick it blocks out the sun for up to 10 years, creating a short ice age. And everything and everyone will be freeze to death in the dark. If you do survive in a full-out shelter, there'll be no food, although they say they should send the old people like me out to gather any food because we won't live long enough to get our cancers. There'll be millions of corpses. And as they decay, the bacteria and viruses multiply and mutate to become more lethal, like polio and the plague and the like. I can go on and on, but you can imagine what devastation it would be. We are close to that. We are like lemmings walking blindly towards a cliff of nuclear annihilation, worrying about things that don't matter. If you put rats in a cage and threaten them with a lethal situation, they go away and do something totally relevant to that which threatens them, displacement activity. Or when to manic denial, clothes, food, let's not think about what really happens. And the media is not teaching us the truth. At least in the 80s, 80% 80 of Americans really knew. Now they don't, and it's more dangerous now because the Cold War's over, but the hot war's on again. And for the first time since the Cold War ended, Russia and America are confronting each other militarily. They are the only countries that can destroy life on Earth. Whereas there's Pakistan and India, each with 200 hydrogen bombs, and they're very volatile. They're always fighting at the border, and you never know what they might. If they have a nuclear war, we'll get what, new, what is called nuclear autumn. There will be a hell of a lot of smoke in the Northern Hemisphere, and crops will fail and billions will die. So <laughs> what's the solution? Well, it's very interesting because the United Nations has just held a conference on the non-proliferation treaty. The, the, the nuclear nations signed the non-proliferation treaty. Who are they? France, arrogant. Britain, extremely arrogant. America, very arrogant. 
Russia and China. And they signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty saying that they promised that they would get rid of nuclear weapons soon, Article 6. They've done exactly the opposite. You know, America's going to spend a trillion dollars in the next 30 years building up its weapons. Why? Because Senator Kyle, that evil little man, said to Obama, I'll let you get SALT II passed, START II passed in the Senate, if you spend a trillion dollars on building nuclear weapons. Why Obama went for that, God only knows. So we're in a, and we're, we've got a very hawkish Senate now. We've got John McCain, Senator, the Armed Services Committee Chairman. He's never seen a war he didn't want to get into. These men are like little boys in a sandbox. You know, mine's bigger than yours. And they still think they can kill. If we keep killing each other, these weapons will be used. Which is why I'm going to write a book called Why Men Kill and Why Women Let Them. What is it about us that we kill each other? They don't count civilian casualties in Iraq. They only count American soldiers getting killed. They don't... And, and your poor soldiers come back, little boys, who are recruited to the army, seeing pigs snouting around in bodies of dead babies. No wonder they never recover. Never recover. I've spent my life trying to save lives. My whole life. I can't imagine killing anyone. I'll be killed if someone wants to kill me, but I'm not going to kill anyone. And if we don't stop this crazy sort of glorification of war, you know, you get on a plane and they say the military people get on now, but when they come back, they've got traumatic syndrome and they don't get paid enough and they don't get their medical care adequately. What is this glorification of war? Why has Napoleon got a tomb in Paris when he killed thousands of people? He was a psychopath. Alexander the Great, George Bush, thou shalt not kill. Life is so sacred. And yet this whole country is geared to killing now. All your money goes to killing. These corporations have to be closed down. And what's the solution? Well, 106 countries at the United Nations unanimously passed the resolution to abolish nuclear weapons. The only countries majorly who fought it are the, are the six nuclear nations. How dare they? They see these weapons as some sort of power. I don't know what it is in their midbrain, you know? It's interesting, in the midbrain of men, the two um, impulses which produce What's that incredible hormone that's like morphine that, you know, when you have an orgasm, you know that lovely feeling you get? Oh, no, it's not oxytocin, no. What? No, I can't think, sorry. But anyway, so, orga no, it's not adrenaline. Orgasm, that's, when you have an orgasm, it's not adrenaline, it's that gorgeous feeling, you know, you just, well, violence does the same thing. And those two impulses are situated very closely in the midbrain of men. And violence is associated with sex. You know, why do they play uh, porno films to pilots who are about to take off from planes and drop bombs? Um, I've, I've met some soldiers who say they ejaculate as they go into battle. It's very interesting, and I want, to, I want to examine this from a physiological, functional point of view. Um, and, and the women, you know, we're 52% of the population and we have no power. Look at Congress, all men with ties. Ties are a symbol of you know what, I think. But we have the nurturing hormones, the oxytocin and the, and the estrogen and, and progesterone to nurture life. And we, we have to stand up and take over now. We have to take over. How we do that, I don't know, but I'm going to write about it in my book. Um, that doesn't mean to say, you know, we make enemies, but 
the, the magic number is 30%. Below 30% representation in an organisation, women vote to please men. Above 30%, there's such mutual reinforcement. They say, no, today we're not voting for missiles, we're voting for milk for children. It has nothing to do with Republicans or Democrats or anything like that. It's what we know to be right. So the solution is we have to mobilise again, as we did in the 80s. We have to have another revolution. We have to get on the media somehow. And I don't know... I mean, <laughs> Greenpeace always gets on the media. I got on the media by... by making friends with the, an engine driver. I got on the media by writing a letter to the paper. I got on the media by having an article in the New England Journal of Medicine. I mean, there are lots and lots of ways we can get on the media. But I say to you, and there, I'm sure there are grandparents here. I've got seven grandchildren and children. You know, if you really, and how much do you love your own life? How precious is it? How amazing that your sperm, out of the millions that your father ejaculated that night, each different, reached your egg. How sacred is your life? And if you understand how precious life is and where we are on the brink of extinction, you look in the mirror every morning and you say, what am I going to do today to save the world? And that's the only way you'll be able to look in the eyes of your grandchildren and children and all these dear little babies around here everywhere. And so I'm going to make sure you have a future. I won't go into nuclear power because I did that the other day. I won't go into global warming, but there's a solution to that too and we'll be talking about that tonight. But I think the most important thing to address today is what I did address. Uh, so I'll probably end here, uh, and if you have any questions, I'll take a few. Make them profound, <laughs> related to what I've just said, otherwise we'll lose the, lose the feeling in the audience. Now, if you have nightmares, fine. It's like I've told you, you've got a, a terrible disease, and you'll go through the stages of grief, a la Kubler-Ross, shock and disbelief. Well, she said one thing wrong, I won't believe anything she said. Or I've got fillings in my teeth, you know. Uh, then depression, go through the depression. Allow yourself to be depressed. Don't, you know, take drugs or don't make yourself feel happy. Feel the feelings. And then anger comes. And if anger is focused in a white hot beam, suddenly you'll know what you have to do. No one's ever told me what to do. And often when I'm in my garden alone and really quiet, I suddenly know what I have to do. You'll be told. It will come to you. But allow yourself the grief because that's how you grow psychologically and evolve into what you must do. And honour that. Honour your feelings. I think there are enough really caring people in this room and intelligent enough to really lead the movement. I came here, I was an alien and a young woman, and I actually led the movement against nuclear weapons in America. If I can do that, you're Americans. <laughs> and I think that people came from all corners of the planet to this country to save the Earth. Americans are kind, loving, caring people. They just need to know what's going on. Only if you change, only if this country changes, only if this country changes will we save the planet. Russia won't move unless you do. You'll have no power unless you change. See not the moat in the other person's eye. Look instead for the moat in your own eye. Listen to what this Pope is saying. He's starting to speak great truths as Jesus would have. Maybe I won't take questions. Maybe I'll end now. Go away and digest and just stay with the feelings um, and take in what I said. I wrote, I've written a lot of books. Um, uh, the, uh, the best one to probably read is, is The New Nuclear Danger, George Bush's Military Industrial Complex. And it's all about the 
corporations and George Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld and the whole, the whole thing. So if you want to learn more, because education is key. The new nuclear danger, George Bush's military industrial complex. If you go to my own website, um, helencaldicott.com, all my books are there. Also, the conference I held this year called The Dynamics of Possible Nuclear Extinction um, with colleagues of Hawking, etc. If you go to my, uh, you might find it there, but my other website, helencaldicottfoundation.org, you'll find the live stream of that conference, which is fantastic. I had Chomsky and all sorts of really notable people. And also you'll find there the live stream of the Fukushima Symposium, the medical and ecological consequences of Fukushima. If you watch those two symposia, you'll really understand and learn A, about nuclear war and that threat, and B, about nuclear power and that threat. That covers both. And then global warming, uh, well, I wrote another book called If You Love This Planet about that. OK, everyone, we've got a big job to do. And uh, God, you feel great when you do the work, because the only way to be happy is not to look at your navel and try and make yourself happy. The only path to happiness is to serve. Thank you.